Hello, and welcome to What's the Big Idea? I'm your host, Michelle Tuck Ponder. Today's episode is brought to you by Destination Imagination, commonly referred to as DI, which is the leading creative problem-solving experience for children. Through DI, innovative project-based educational experiences, participants gain the skills that will set them up for careers like the one we're going to hear about today. Learn more about DI at destinationimagination.org. On today's episode, we are pleased to welcome Rachel Hale. Rachel is a singer and songwriter originally from Prescott, Arkansas. She is open for artists such as Tracy Bird and Joe Nichols. American Idol fans might recognize her from season 12, where her performance of Nothing But the Water was named as one of Billboard's top 12 moments. Rachel holds a degree in songwriting from Belmont University, and she co-wrote songs for Selah's album, Firm Foundation, which was nominated for a Dove Award in 2020. Rachel's newest single, Promised Land, was just released on June 18th. I'm also proud to note that Rachel is a distinguished alumna of Destination Imagination. Joining us today from Redding, California, please welcome Rachel Hale. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? I am doing really well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be on here today. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're so we're so excited to have you. You know, we this podcast features people who have really exciting careers. And I think so far yours is the most exciting. So oh, wow, that's <laughs> so kind to say. Really Thank is. you so, so much. Forgive me for being a fangirl. <laughs> oh, please be a fangirl. I need as many as I can get. So thank you very much. Cool. So for our listeners who may not know of you yet and are just meeting you today, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career? Yes. And um, like you said earlier, I'm from a tiny town called Prescott, Arkansas. It's a beautiful town, but it's a small town of 3,500 people. And um, when I was a little girl, I knew that I wanted to sing and write songs that I believed would change the world. And I ended up going to Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee, where I majored in songwriting. And while I was there, I was actually casted for season 12 of American Idol, which radically changed my life and opened up so many doors um, for music and for me to be able to sing for a living, which was such a blessing. And then I was a part of a church plant called Nashville Life Church, which if you know who Cece Winans is, her and her husband actually started the church. And so I got to lead worship there and write songs. And it was actually there that I wrote a song called Firm Foundation that Sayla ended up recording and making the title track of their record that you had mentioned earlier was nominated for the Dove Award, but it actually won in October. So it won <laughs> Inspirational Album of the Year, which was so, so exciting. And for the past three years, I have been in Redding, California, um, finishing school in ministry school. So yeah, that's part of my journey, part of what I've been doing. And yeah, it's been fun. It's been really, really fun. So this is really interesting to me because your music is clearly part of your ministry. Yes, it is. <laughs> it really has been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. and so I guess my question is, and you talked about um, being involved in the church and, and, and with CC Winans, but was there a particular moment, mentor or experience that inspired you to take the journey? Like, first of all, How did you try out for American Idol? Like, how did that happen? Well, it's wild. So the truth is, this is the truth. When I was 10 years old, well, when I was a child, I was extremely shy. Like, I wouldn't even sit in my grandmother's lap. Like, I was ridiculously shy. I wouldn't talk to anyone. (laughs) I would just hide behind my family, my mom all the time. And uh, my mom put me in a preschool, and they had this, like, um, like, you know, an end of the year recital where you sing songs Mm -hmm. and the teachers kept telling my mom, oh my gosh, you have to see Rachel. Like she's amazing. And my mom was thinking if she'll stand up there the whole time, like my mom could not imagine me even being on a stage. And I was three years old. And that day when they had the recital concert thing for the little preschoolers, I was not only like the loudest child I was in the middle and I was literally pushing other kids out of the way and just singing so loud. And my mom was weeping. And from that day on, I was a different kid. I was outgoing. I was friendly and I loved music. And when I was about 10, I remember, um, just like thinking about 
what I wanted to do with my life and how I could use my gifts is what I felt like. And I, and I had this kind of epiphany moment where I knew that I wanted to, um, to sing and change the world through music. And I felt like for God, honestly, as a little girl thinking that. And so when I was, so that has been the thing that's kind of been my, uh, my North star or my compass for my life of like, no matter where I was or what opportunities I had, I knew like, no, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sing. That's what I'm going to do. And so when I was at Belmont um, university, I was actually interning in Los Angeles and, uh, And it was, and I loved LA. I loved California so much. And this was my plan. I was like, it was the end of the semester and I knew I'd have to go back to the South for the summer. And I was like, and they were having idol auditions and I didn't want to leave. So I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to audition for American Idol and I'm going to get on the show. So I get to stay in LA. (laughs) This is what the mindset of the 21 year old was at the time. And sure enough, I went, it was the day before I was booked to leave. Uh, like my flight out, like I was going to, or I was, I was going to drive, but it was right before I was booked to leave California. And, uh, and I remember going to the audition at Dodger stadium and I ended up making it through the first round. (laughs) And then I was able to keep going back and forth. I was a part of that show for nine months. So I got to stay. Yeah. I was going back and forth from Nashville to LA, but it was really funny, but that's honestly how I auditioned for the show. I didn't want to leave LA. So I was like, I'm going to make it on this TV show so I can stay. (laughs) Because I was 21. So it was, that was my reasoning. <laughs> and I'm going to so, sing. <laughs> so, so you get to sing it and you got to sing in front of millions of people. Yes. yes. How, how, how has that being able, instead of just singing like in church, which is no small thing, and I'm sure oh, the church no, totally. that you were at was a really big church, but getting, being able to sing in front of millions of people. Yeah. What, what was that like? Wow. Um, life change. It would, well, there's so, I mean, that's a huge question, you know, really, but, uh, but it was wonderful. I mean, I mean, my season, I think we had like 15 million that were watching it, which is wild to think about. But for me, I always wanted to pick songs that, and I got in trouble for this, honestly, because I didn't pick easy songs to sing all the time. I picked songs that I felt like would make a difference because I just really want to make a difference. I've always just wanted to leave a legacy, leave like touch people's lives for the better. I I really have always wanted to make a difference in people's lives. And so for me, every time that I got to go on the stage or every opportunity that I got to sing, I knew that it was for a reason and it was for a purpose. And I just wanted to leave a mark on people's lives for the better. Mm -hmm. And so it was a dream come true for me, honestly, to know that I was being able to influence that many people was, um, was such a like incredible, incredible opportunity. And for me, it was just really a dream fulfilled. Yeah. That, that is, that is awesome. You know, and, and, and you talk a lot about how DI has, has helped you and and influenced your life. And so, you know, we're all about communication, collaboration, critical thinking and creativity. How do you use those four C's in your work and in your career and also in fulfilling your goal to change people's lives? I use those four C's all the time, honestly. Um, It's so funny. Part of my journey that I didn't mention was when I was in ministry school out here, in Reading, I actually worked at the news station. I became a producer of the news. And so I learned a lot about collaboration, community, communication, creativity, all of it, like how to think on your feet at all times. So I used that there a ton. And then um, also just with songwriting and with music, you are literally pulling things out of the air when you step into. So in Nashville, co-writing is a really big deal. And so uh, you step into a room with someone you've never met before and you sit down and write a song with someone you've never met. And so you are literally like learning how to be vulnerable and how to communicate on a, on a very um, like collaborative basis every single day when you're writing music. So I use those four C's all the time (laughs) when writing songs. So we talked a little bit about how music is kind is kind of your ministry, yeah. And and so, what activities did you do as a student, as, as particularly as a ministry student, yeah. that helped you to kind of pull the 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 music and the ministry together? For me, I would love to touch on this from a perspective of like. If you might believe differently than me, I still want this to apply to you if you're if you're listening to this. So for me, 
Um, I think all of us can resonate with the idea that we want to make a difference in the world that I think every single person listening to this podcast, uh, believes that they were created for a purpose, you know, that they were created to leave their mark on the world for me, for school. I think that it allowed me to delve deeper into what I believe so that I can leave a mark on the world in the way that, um, to share love, which is really the the essence of, of what I, I believe. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I think that, um, I was able to, the thing about ministry school for me is that I actually, it, it the school I went to had 64 different countries represented, which is a lot like destination imagination, all these different countries globally. Mm-hmm. So 64 different countries. And so I was able to, Um, the thing that I loved about school for music specifically was I was able to learn from so many different, um, different, different beliefs around my own faith, even different perspectives, Mm -hmm. even about my own faith. And so I think that I was able to become a better songwriter because I was able to understand different cultures and different ways of thinking. And so different ways of relating to people. And I was able to be around different types of music even, you know? So, and, and, and that helped me as a songwriter to, to be able to um, just relate to people on a, on a even better level, if that makes sense. It does make sense. It does awesome. Make sense. Cool. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's a, those are good questions. Those are very good questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to take a break here for a second and we're going to get back to our guest, Rachel Hale, um, in a very few minutes. So stay tuned. As our children are thrust into an increasingly fast paced and virtual world, we can't forget to focus on their emotional health and development. These social emotional skills are needed now more than ever. Luckily, Destination Imagination is here to help. Download our free guide on social emotional learning, which includes four hands-on activities you can do at home or in the classroom. The guide even includes curriculum standards for each activity, perfect to share with your favorite teacher. Download this free resource today by visiting destinationimagination.org slash the big idea. So welcome back to What's the Big Idea? I'm your host, Michelle Tuck Ponder, and we're here today with award-winning songwriter. One of the things I'm really interested in is that you're from a really small town, and a lot of our listeners are from a really small town, and they're thinking, how do you get, one, how do you get to the bigger spaces, and two, how do you manage that transition from being from a small town to one where it's much, much larger with, quite frankly, you know, a, a diversity of people, diversity of ideas. How do you, what, what did you use to manage that? That's an amazing question. There are two things that I really want to touch on. Um, one is like you're created for a purpose. So ask yourself what that purpose is and what you believe it is. And, um, don't, don't sway to the right or left from that thing. Like, know it. And, and the other, the other thing about the purpose thing is that we're all create. I, I, um, I believe that we were each given a fingerprint for a reason. We're unique. There's no one like me. There's no one like you, if you're whoever you are listening and you were created to leave your mark on the world and that there already is a Taylor Swift. There already is a, um, Barack Obama. There already is, I mean, you name the person, there already is that person that we might look up to, but they're already alive and they're already leaving their mark on the world but you are a new creation. You have never existed on this planet and you have a unique purpose. So don't compare yourself to people and don't think that your purpose is less valuable. If you are called to be a teacher, a janitor, the president, they're all the same, in my opinion, in value, but just do what you feel your purpose is to the best of your ability. So when I was in that tiny town, 3,500 people, I believed I was called to sing. And I didn't, I had opportunities to do many things uh, because I'm gifted in different areas. And, um, but I knew like, no, I'm going to sing. That is what I'm going to do. And so I kept my purpose as the main thing at all times. And then in regards to walking into bigger arenas that, that in that area of that question, I, um, I kept my head down and I just kept going. And because be, being from a, a small town of 3,500 people in Southwest Arkansas, there weren't a ton of opportunities to maybe there were opportunities to sing. And I had a mom and a dad that really believed in my dream and, and helped, helped me a lot. They really pushed me and, and they said, you can do it. You can do it. Even when I didn't believe in myself, they kept believing in me. So I was blessed with that, with, with parents that really believed in me. Um, but I remember going to Belmont university in Nashville 
and being in a big town, you know, and getting there and being around um, so much talent. And one thing that people don't know about me is that when I got to Belmont, I actually auditioned for the commercial voice program and I did not make it <laughs> into the commercial voice program. Yeah. And then I ended up finding out the songwriting program. I applied and I got accepted to that. And that was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because when I got to Belmont, I was around all these amazing singers. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I'm not as good, you know, and then I would get invited to parties and, and sorority parties and things like that. And I just remember thinking to myself, I didn't get accepted to commercial voice. So I must not be as good as these people. So I'm going to practice instead of going to these parties and instead of going out, instead of doing these things, I'm going to go practice. And so instead of going, I literally thought I was an underdog and I went to the practice room and for four years, I practiced probably harder than anybody in that school. So much so that when I graduated, people thought I was a commercial voice major because I was in the commercial voice. Like I was in every class, every extracurricular class I had, you know, I was there and I was always in their practice room. So people thought I actually was a commercial voice major. And then I ended up being on idol <laughs> and other people had auditioned. And then I ended up being in, from the school. Many people had auditioned, but I ended up doing really well on the show. And then I ended up um, even being in best of the best showcase at Beaumont, which was a huge deal. There's only four people that get to be in that every year. And so I ended up being in it um, my, my senior year of school. And it was because I worked really hard and I kept the main thing, the main thing. And I, I, so many people, I've had people say to me, like, don't miss out on these opportunities or don't miss out on making certain memories. But I have this core belief that like, I don't know, I could make a memory with you of being at a party or being here, or I could make a memory of being on stage, having my dream come true. And I would rather make that memory. <laughs> so, so I've, I'm serious. Cause I, I still to this day have people like, Oh, you're missing out on this, or you're missing out on this barbecue, or you're missing out whatever. And it's like, that is true. But I've had other opportunities because I chose to go to the practice room or I chose to stay home and write a song or I chose to like do that thing. Instead, I have a different memory to make. And that's me being on stage, do, getting to do my dream, you know? And mm -hmm. so that's my advice to people. And that's, that's how I, I've actually like had the opportunities to walk into like, um, to big arenas. It's because I, I kept my head down and I kept the main thing, the main thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That, you know, that's so cool because one of the things my dad used to tell me when I was younger and, and he'd say, what I want for me in life is I want you to know the value of hard work and I want you to be resilient. So, so when you have setbacks and you're going to have setbacks, I want you to be able to dust yourself off believe in yourself and to keep keep it moving and to be willing to put the work in. If somebody gives you criticism or tells you, you don't do this well enough or you need to to not take it personally, but to take it as a favor that somebody sent you a favor that they cared enough about you to tell you you're not quite cutting the mustard. And then you do your best to to try to try to be the best that you can be. And I think your your life or your story is is really about doing that and really believing in yourself and um, and what you can accomplish and having the importance of having people around you who are willing to support you in that dream because that's really important too so so i'm going to ask you a real rookie question how do you write a song oh goodness okay there are so many ways i'll make you narrow it down with someone or by yourself with someone <laughs> with someone mm -hmm. um depends how well you know the person it's better if you know them honestly because okay. then they can like or for me it's better if they know me because then they 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 know how i like kind of operate but um initially if you're set up with a co-write you sit down with someone and um everyone has different ways that they write i like to come with an idea of like this is what i'd like to write about today and then if they like it then you kind of go for it um but some people start with a melody like i have this melody idea or some people come with a great title like i just have this title that i think is awesome and i have a concept let's go from there and um 
that's kind of how you write it. You start that way. I mean, obviously there's structure to a song, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, mm-hmm. chorus, you know, mm-hmm. that's pretty popular or have some pre-courses in there if you want, but there's, there's always going to be a structure, but, um, but really it's, you start with communication, you start with an idea and then you chase that thing. And then you hope that you write something <laughs> in maybe a four hour window at the most, you know? Um, wow. but yeah, cause a lot of times with, with, songwriting you have like a session from 10 to 2 or 2 to 6 that's very common in Nashville and um yeah so you hope you get it done but a lot of times you'll find that you it might take you a couple co-writes to write a song and then some people some hit songs that you hear took years to write they laid Mm -hmm. it down they couldn't finish it and then you come back and and try again and Mm -hmm. and so they're every song is unique every song is different My favorite way to write is to come with a concept, to come with an idea and even a melody to go along with that and then go from there. Um, But yeah, that's, that is my favorite way to write, but there's, there's so many different ways you can write a song. So So in keeping with idols, that theme, do you have any songwriting idols? Oh, Tom Douglas. He is a, so that's the funny thing. Uh, I feel like in Nashville, everyone knows who songwriters are, but mm-hmm. I, I've learned very quickly that when you get out of Nashville, most people don't know who the songwriters are, <laughs> but Tom Douglas wrote a song called house that built me by Miranda Lambert. And he's written, mm-hmm. I mean, he's written a ton of hit songs. He's, he's in the songwriters Har- uh, hall of fame right now, but I, um, actually had the privilege of getting to have him as a teacher at Belmont. He was one of our songwriting teachers and I loved his class so much. I took it twice. <laughs> I had extracurricular credits and I was like, I was like, I'm going to go take that class again. And I took it twice. I literally, but, but he, Tom Douglas is literally one of my songwriting heroes. And um, there's another woman named Natalie Hemby, who I, I highly admire. And then um, Alan Shamblin, uh, he wrote Bonnie Rates, I Can't Make You Love Me. So, um, yeah, so I, I, those are my three absolutely um, favorite writers off the top of my head. So yeah, huge fans. I'm a huge fan of all three of them. Yeah. Cool. Oh, so now we're going to move on to the next section of our program, which is called rapid fire. So you get to answer questions, yes or no. And if you choose, you can explain your answer. Um, but here we go. Let's do it. Yes or no. Will robots ultimately come for your job? No. I think that I think the reasoning is clear on that, though. I, yeah, so I can give you my reasoning if you want it. Yeah, give me your reasoning. Because I don't believe I, I, I think that creativity cannot I don't ever think creativity can be manufactured by a robot. Not true creativity. I think that's always going to have to be um, <laughs> from humans. <laughs> so songwriting, I mean, they might be able to mimic stuff, but true, authentic music has to come out of a heart. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah. Number two, is social media the best or the worst? Ooh, I'm going to say the worst, <laughs> even though I love it. I, I have to I have to agree with that. Yeah. OK, finally, the bonus question. Yes or no. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes, <gasps> because everything salty needs a little sweet. You got to have balance, you know, <laughs> That's the best rationale I've heard. Everything <laughs> salty needs a little sweet. And I think everything salty needs a little sweet. <laughs> that is so cool. One last question. Do it, do what, it. What big ideas excite you today? I don't know. There's That's a huge question, which I know is a part of the whole podcast, but <laughs> what big ideas? This is so funny because I did not expect this interview to go towards social media because I said it was the worst earlier and I still don't really like it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But I'm actually excited to see how the big idea that is actually exciting me personally is to see how I can influence in the midst of social media, because whether I like it or not, we are in a social media driven culture and that's probably not going to go anywhere. And so I'm actually excited to see how I can influence people all across the world without ever stepping on an airplane and how I can use social media in a positive light with my music and, and actually how I can bring connection with my music in an authentic way through social media. So that is the big idea. And it's, it's not, that's just personally what I keep thinking about. And so 
for me, that is my, like, that's what's on my heart right now, just to be very honest. So, yeah, I think, I think that that is terrific. That is cool. terrific. And I'm, I'm so glad I'm, I had so much fun with you today. And thank hey, you yeah, so much Michelle, for you're so, here. you're so fun. This is awesome. <laughs> So we would like to acknowledge that this episode of What's the Big Idea was recorded on land, originally inhabited and cultivated by the Catawba, Cherokee, Chickasaw, Lenape, and Shawnee Nations. We are grateful for this land and for the people who have stewarded it for generations. This episode was produced by Kelsey Selleck with additional material provided by Donna Farrow and Chris Beisel and music by Kevin McLeod. Special thanks to Rachel Hale, our guest, for joining us today. You can learn more about Rachel by checking her out on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, or at Rachel Hale Music. To learn more about our show and about how DI can fuel even more big ideas, visit us at destinationimagination.org. Thanks for listening today and hope to have you join us again soon with more big ideas. The U.S. Department of Labor estimates that 65% of today's students will be employed in jobs that have yet to be invented. We have no way of knowing what those jobs will entail. But we do know that the skills that will prepare them for success are the skills that they can develop through destination imagination. Hi, I'm Chris Beisel, Director of Training for Destination Imagination. I was a team manager for 15 years and 22 teams before I joined the staff. Being a team manager was the best thing that I did for all my children. Destination Imagination, or DI, is an international project-based competition that reinforces the four C's, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. You probably heard about those skills in today's episode, and DI is the place where kids like yours develop those skills for themselves. Students work together in small teams to create solutions to a challenge. DI's team challenges fall into one of seven categories, scientific, technical, engineering, fine arts, improvisation, service learning, and for our younger children, early learning. A DI team selects one of those seven challenges and prepares a solution to present at a local tournament. Throughout the experience, students create projects, solve problems, build relationships, learn new concepts, and have a great time in the process. We're building the workforce of the future. Today's DI participants are tomorrow's innovators, problem solvers, and leaders. If that sounds like a good fit for you and the young people in your life, we would love to have you join us. To get started today, visit DestinationImagination.org slash learn more.